presents an inspiring gospel reflection by Father Michael Sparrow. Father Michael is a Jesuit priest working as a writer and retreat master at the Bellarmine Jesuit Retreat House outside Chicago. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Peter began to tell Jesus, we have given up everything and followed you. Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, there is no one who has given up house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the sake of the gospel who will not receive a hundred times more now in this present age houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and eternal life in the age to come. But many that are first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, it's been over three months since you've seen green vestments in the sanctuary. February 21st, to be exact, uh, the day before Ash Wednesday. So we had 40 days plus of Lent and 50 days of the Easter season, over three months until we come back to ordinary time. Here we are in the eighth week of ordinary time. And symbol of ordinary time is growth, symbolized by the green vestments. And the task of that growth is to continue to keep our eyes fixed on the Lord and not on ourselves. Easier said than done, isn't it? Today's gospel is a good case in point where Peter starts looking at all of the sacrifices that he's making, being separated from his wife, traveling sleeping on the ground, not sure where his next meal is going to come from, having to live as a, as a beggar. And he starts to feel sorry for himself and comes to Jesus, and you have to admire Peter because he articulates. He's able to say what's in the mind and heart of so many of the disciples who don't have the courage to say it, but Peter puts it out there and in essence says, hey, we're given an awful lot to follow you, what's in it for us? Now, in the first reading today in the book of Sirach, we hear that whatever is given to the Lord will be paid back sevenfold time. Now, if you were to go to a stockbroker or an investment manager and you were guaranteed a return of investment of sevenfold, you'd be a rich man. Well, Jesus ups the ante and he says, whoever's given up anything will be paid back, not sevenfold, not 25, not 50, a hundredfold as many times, not just in the future life, but in the here and now. What's he talking about? Obviously, he's not talking about physical wealth so much as the joy that comes in knowing that the Holy Spirit is alive within our hearts. That's the task of ordinary time. We finish the Pentecost season, we come into ordinary time, and it's a celebration of life in the Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit dwells inside of us, what is born of that are the fruits of the Spirit. We pray for the gifts of the Spirit, that our ministries may be imbued with power, but we also pray for the fruits of the Spirit that they may be manifest in our lives. For Jesus says, by their fruits, you will know them. 
It's not those who do mighty deeds, but those who have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. All the fruits of the Spirit manifest in our lives that are the true disciples of the Lord. Again, in the book of Sirach, it says, to give alms is to offer a sacrifice of praise. When we recognize how much God continues to do for us day in and day out, then the natural response is one of gratitude. In fact, St. Ignatius considered one of the worst sins we could commit would be a sin of ingratitude, of simply taking our gifts for granted or focusing on all that we're doing and not on what the Lord is doing for us. Isn't that where the spiritual exercises lead? To the contemplation to obtain divine love? You know that meditation. You remember four times Ignatius says, contemplate what God is doing for you. Pay attention to all of your gifts, natural and supernatural, all the ways in which God has gifted you. And then don't you just love how St. Ignatius says, what response would any reasonable person make? In other words, if you're not an absolute dolt and you recognize all that God has given for you, what response would you make? And the response is, I'm going to put myself unconditionally in God's hands. Take, Lord, receive my liberty, my thoughts, my memory, everything that you've given to me. Let me give it back to you to be used according to your will. Just continue to sustain me with your love and grace. Ignatius comes back again a second time, and he says, recognize how God is dwelling inside us through the gift of the sacraments, through the gift of faith. God is not only outside of us, God is dwelling within us, and God is dwelling in all of creation, in the rocks and trees and planets and stars. Again, what, reasonable, what response would any reasonable person make? except to say, Lord, I give it all back to you. A third time, Ignatius comes back and he says, picture that God is laboring, working to, to make all things work to the good, to draw us into this power of God's grace and love. God never sleeps. God never ceases to make all things. St. Paul says in his letter to the Romans, God makes all things work to the good for those who love him. Again, as you contemplate that, what response would any reasonable person make? A fourth and final time, Ignatius says, we are called to become part of that body of Christ more fully. And he uses a double analogy. Just as the rays of the sun can't be separated from the sun, or the droplets of water can't be separated from the waterfall, they are one. So we are drawn into this mystical union with Christ, becoming more fully the body of Christ. Again, what response would any reasonable person make to all that God is giving? Gratitude, gratitude is the great earmark of Ignatian spirituality. When we take our eyes off of ourselves and all that I'm doing, but we look at what God is doing in us and around us. Remember, at the beginning of the Contemplatio, Ignatius reminds us of two things. Number one, that love consists in a mutual giving. The beloved gives to the lover, and the lover gives, receives, and gives back to the beloved. There's this mutual exchange of love, because love wants to be shared. When we recognize that we're loved, the response is, I want to love in return. And Ignatius says, that's not just warm, fuzzy feelings. That's just not nice, pious thoughts. It's not sugary words. It expresses itself in the daily deeds of love. This is the task of ordinary time. 
to grow into the people of love, to get our eyes off of ourselves and our own hurts and our own wounds and misunderstandings and lack of appreciation and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and continue to keep them fixed on the Lord. And to do that by daily praying the great prayer of St. Ignatius, the Sushi Pei. I was talking to Father Tom Critic uh, recently, and he shared the story of one Jesuit came to a provincial, not Father Critic, and he had a rather cushy assignment. Uh, he was set up in his ministry. He had his own car. He had his own discretionary income. He had his own secretary. He had his own corner office. He had wide ability to be able to set his travel schedule. It was a pretty plum assignment, and the provincial asked him to consider another assignment that wouldn't have any of those perks. And the Jesuit hemmed and hawed, and uh, Father Provincial said, well, I'm going to appeal to his good nature as a Jesuit. And he said, have you been praying the sushi pay? And he said, yeah, I've been praying the sushi pay. And the Provincial said, well, what about it? And he said, you know, Father, I really didn't mean it. <laughs> when I said, take, Lord, receive, I, uh, uh, that wasn't exactly what I meant. To put ourselves totally unconditionally in God's hands and to say, do with me what you will, is a deeper form of humility, is a purer love. I have a dear friend, Father Jim Willig, who was the founder of a ministry I work with, Heart to Heart, Catholic media ministry. Father Jim was a charismatic preacher. He had his own radio show. He had his own tele cable television show. He tripled the size of his parish while he was pastor. And he made the spiritual exercises, and he was deeply Ignatian. And he used to pray that sushi pay prayer every day. And there was one day he came to the chapel and he prayed that, take Lord, receive, I surrender it all to you. And he just felt the presence of the Holy Spirit descending on him. And he had that warm, warm glow inside of him that was for sure a sign that the Lord had heard his prayer. He went to the doctor later that afternoon. He had had a pain in his side and figured he should have it checked out. The doctor was concerned. He did some tests and he came back and he said, I'm sorry to tell you, you have stage four renal cell cancer. You have two years to live. Father Jim rushed back to the chapel where he had prayed earlier that morning the sushi pay prayer. And he said to the Lord, that is not what I had in mind. Do you remember the story of Pope Benedict? After he was consecrated as Pope, he called together the Jesuit leadership in Rome. And he addressed the leadership of our community. And he said, when I pray that prayer of St. Ignatius, the take, Lord, receive, it gives me pause. It sh sends a shiver of fear down my spine when I contemplate what the Lord might ask of me and contemplate my own human frailty. What an extraordinary act of humility and honesty on the part of the Holy Father. Again, if we make that prayer of placing ourselves in God's hands and we simply look at ourselves and we say, I can do it, then we're no better than Peter at the Last Supper bragging that everybody else may desert you but not me. When we recognize our own frailty, our own weakness, the grumblings within our own heart, and we say, Lord, the only way that I can give myself to you is through your love and grace. You sustain me. You enable me to be a man on mission to enable the women to be women and, and mission. We can only do that through your grace. This day and every day, 
That's the task of ordinary time, to keep growing in our ability to surrender to his love. Amen? Amen. Heart to heart, hand in hand, praying for grace to understand. Spirit of Jesus, open our hearts to live and to love the gospel.